Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching, we're in Statics and today we're going to start a new chapter, chapter 9 and we're going to do problem 9.2. It says, determine the location x and y of the center of the y. Okay, so basically in this new chapter what we have is that we have to find centroids of the length, the area, the volume, the mass or gravity of many objects. Okay, so in this case we have this wire in here and with this wire what we need to do is that we need to find what will be the center, like which point, which location around here will be the, cent the center of this, okay? Now, what we can see on this first picture is that this wire has a symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So basically what I'm saying is that if we draw this line, like this one, we can see that what we see on our right is the same thing as what we see on our left. And this simplifies our things a little bit because what we will realize is that the center in re with respect to my x position should be exactly at my x equal to zero location, okay? And that's just given because of symmetry, okay? So easy, we just found our first uh, point which is the center on the x location which is equal to zero. Now. In order to find the y location of this center, what we need to do is that we will utilize this equation that is given to us in the book where we have to do the integral of a multiplication of any arbitrary point on the y and the y location multiplied by the change of what we are finding. In this case, we're going to use the change in length. So we're going to call dl for change in the length direction. And we're going to divide this by the integral of only the change in length. If we were to be using the mass, we'll be doing the change in mass, or the volume, we'll be doing the change in volume, and so on and so on. Now, we have this wire, and we what we need to do is that we need to know what this y, arbitrary y is equal to, and what this change in L is as well. So now let's see if we were to let's zoom in a little bit on here and if we were to do a summatory of changing lengths of this wire they will look something like this. There will be a bunch and a bunch and it will be really microscopic because we are doing so, uh, an integral. So that's the definition of it that in order to do the changes so small so small that when we add them all together is basically like having the perfect um, shape of it. Now, let's say that my uh, change in length looks something like this, right? Now, if we were to zoom in in that change in length, what we can see is that it will be a line more or less like this one. So that will be my change in length. So we can write that this that's the L. Now, what else can we say? Well, what we can say is that we will have a change in the y direction and also a change in the x direction according into the year. Now, so that's the L. What happens about my arbitrary point in the y? So, for example, in here, this is my change in L. So my y arbitrary should be equal to my y um, my y value, right? Now, it's similar case we will have for our x arbitrary and our arbitrary point should be equal to my value of x because we have this equation of y equals x squared. Now, now that we have this, we can replace this arbitrary y for our value of y and this change in L, what we can do is that we can use Pythagorean theorem because this is a triangle. So what does a Pythagorean theorem tell us? Well, it tells us that dl should be equal to the square root of the square of the change in x plus the square of the change in the y direction. Now, we don't know what's the change in x and we don't know what the change in y is. But what we can do is that we're going to take this right side and we're going to multiply by dx over dx. 
And the reason why I'm doing this is doesn't come up right of nowhere in my mind. What happens is that we're going to introduce this one over the x inside of this root. And what will happen is that what we will have, let's see, is that, so let me start writing out so you can guys better see it as I speak. Well, we will have dx over dx squared plus we will have dy over dy all squared. Then let's not forget that on the outside, we left at dx on the numerator, therefore we just leave it as dx on top, okay? Now that we did this, we will realize that dx over dx is equal to one, right? So let's see, dl equals two, and this is our root. Now our root simplifies by one square, it's basically one, plus dy over dx, I'm sorry, I put dy over dy. So what is this dy over dx equal to? Well, we don't know it yet, but we can calculate it because we know what's the equation of y with respect to x, right? So let's do some work a little on the side. We know that y is equal to uh, x squared. Therefore, if we do the change in y with respect to x, we will realize that this is equal to 2x. So we can plug it in back in here and we will find out that this is 2x. We're going to square it and we're going to multiply it by dx. The main reason we did all these modifications, and you can go through this in, in the book as well, is that we want to find our uh, integrals with respect to only one of our variables. We have dx, we have x, and this y, we will realize that is equal to our y and is equal to x squared, same as here. So basically we can put everything in terms of x and we can do this integral, okay? So we're going to say that y bar, so our centroid, it's equal to the fraction. So now we're using our main equation. And then we start the integral of our arbitrary y, which is equal to x squared. So we have x squared multiplied by dl. Well, dl, we found that it's equal to this. So we can basically write this as this root of one plus, now we have, if we put this will be four x squared multiplied by dx. And then we need to divide by only the integral of dl and as we said before dl is equal to this root of 1 plus 4x squared multiplied by dx the only things that we're missing in here in order to get an answer is that we need to do uh we need to know the boundaries so where does it start where does it end this integral well we want to know this wire and this wire starts in here and it ends in here and we want and we're doing the integral with respect to the x axis right to the x value so we start at this point which is negative 2 and we finish at this positive 2 that is given in here right so we're going to put those values as my boundary values so we got negative 2 and we got positive 2 same as well negative 2 and positive 2 okay now we're going to plug this this into our calculator so we're going to do math 9 if you have a graphic calculator and i hope you guys have one we're going to plug in x squared multiply by this root of 1 plus 4 times x squared all this is dx therefore we will have that on top we will have equal to 16.94 two, three, five. And then on the bottom, we have to do math nine again from negative two all the way to two of only the square root of one plus four x squared dx. And this is equal to 9.293567. And if we do the fraction of these two numbers, 
we will realize that my centroid in the y location is located at 1.823 feet okay so our final answer for our centroid so we can write centroid it's equal to well we found out first that due to symmetry a x centroid is equal to zero and our y centroid is equal to 1.2 1.82 so 1.823 okay and this is our final answer thank you guys for watching i hope you guys like the video please push the like video the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one